OK, so good morning, everybody. And uh, welcome to the Web Applications 1 course that we are starting uh, this morning. Um, I'm, uh, as, you, as you saw, I'm uh, uh, recording this class, uh, so all the classes will uh, be recorded. Even if I'm not uh, doing any real-time streaming, I will uh, normally publish uh, the lectures after in the same day, usually after the class, okay? So that's for, just for setting the rules. So I, I, sp I will spend, as usual, some time at the beginning to talk about the course that we are going to follow together. Uh, usually, you know, I tend to start at uh, five minutes past the hour, sharp, if, if possible, so that you can you know, shift classrooms and have uh, uh, so, uh, some, some reference timing, okay? Um, so, uh, the title of the course uh, sort of gives it away. You know, we are going to talk about uh, uh, web applications. The uh, general goal is to understand the architecture of the, of the um, information systems based uh, on web technologies, which is today most applications are done in, in this way. Um, and in particular, the web ecosystem is very complex, uh, very rich. Uh, we will focus uh, in this course uh, on mostly the front-end development, okay? The development on the, on the client side uh, uh, and leaving to other courses the, 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 you know, the difficulties or the specific uh, um, issues uh, related to the server side uh, um, development. And uh, in particular, we are going to make a new friend with the JavaScript language. Uh, it will be a difficult friend to deal with. It's a very strange and uh, psychopathic friend uh, sometimes, but uh, it's uh, one of the major languages, and uh, after a while, okay, if you treat it well, it will treat you well back, usually, and uh, uh, which is basically the, the, the only language that is used in front-end development. And uh, we spend also some time about uh, uh, the React framework, uh, which is one of the several, five, six, ten, depending on how, how you count them, uh, one of the several frameworks uh, for easing the development uh, of, uh, of front-end applications, okay? Uh, of course, we'll need uh, also to do a little bit of back-end development, uh, just the minimum uh, amount uh, that we need uh, to sustain our, our front-end. Hmm? Um, in fact, this path here, these first six credits, are a part of a bigger picture, okay, that I try in the, uh, the, which is offered in the computer engineering degree, uh, which I try to sketch here, okay? So we are in the red box, okay, in the web application one. Uh, you know that this course is uh, in Italian and uh, in English. Uh, the two courses are totally aligned. We are using the same slides, we are doing the same labs, uh, we are doing the same exam also, in the same way with the same topic, so uh, that's, uh, that helps us to, uh, and may also help you to know that they are totally aligned. Um, of course, uh, me and my colleague uh, Luigi De Russi, we are not saying the same words in class, of course, uh, each one has the, their own teaching style, but. Uh, uh, the, the goal is that to have actually uh, totally parallel uh, topics. And the, the topics of this course are, as I said, uh, uh, JavaScript and front-end programming will be our main focus. Uh, six credits are not too much. Uh, we are trying to pack a lot uh, of stuff inside uh, these six credits without crashing, without uh, uh, I say exceeding the, the load of a six-credit course. And uh, this is the, you know, this is the only nearly mandatory course in computer engineering, uh, mean that in the most of the paths uh, in, uh, in uh, computer engineering, this is a mandatory course of the first year. There are some paths with, I would say, a small number of students uh, that don't take this course, uh, but uh, I'm sorry for them. Um, apart from this, you have a set of uh, courses that may be um, elective in general or elective for some specific uh, path that you can choose. And uh, in particular, I will mention Web Applications 2, which is a course of the second year given the, by Professor Malnati. 
and uh, um, which focus mostly, uh, mostly on the backend programming. Okay, so how to make the backend scalable and uh, 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 handling all the performance and concurrency issues that arise uh, on the backend. No? We, on the front end programming, we have one application that is running on my computer. I, the application doesn't care if the same website or the, or the same application is also running on 10,000 other computers because each one <laughs> is running on their own computer. The backend needs to serve the needs of, of many, of all, and so uh, from the performance point of view, it's more critical and needs uh, you know, specific technology for that. And that will be dealt in the Web Applications 2 courses. Uh, in between, you have this course called uh, Distributed System Programming. Um, that uh, will try to give you the basis uh, of distributed programming. So what it means uh, uh, when you have uh, a lot of a highly distributed system. So imagine a server which itself may be uh, distributed across different machines to, to manage the load and uh, serving at the same time uh, thousands of different clients. So all the race conditions, all the consistency issue, all the design issues that come up uh, 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 are dealt in general on distributed programming are dealt in that course. Uh, by the way, uh, let's make the difference between distributed programming and concurrent programming. Okay, we're in the course of uh, digital uh, what are, um, system design, uh, I don't remember uh, the, the English name, you are dealing more with concurrent programming. So multiple applications running on the same CPU, sharing memories and so on. And distributed programming is this with the same problems on a larger scale, where we have different computers that are only connected to the network, they're not sharing a memory, okay? Uh, and so the ty type of issues is different. Hmm? Easier and more complex at the same time, it's different. So that's the main web, say, path. And then we have two other courses that I uh, represented in, in, in blue color. Uh, one is the human computer interaction course. Uh, again, it's an, it's an elective course that you can follow in most of the paths. Uh, is given by, again, Luigi De Russis, who is uh, also giving the, um, the course here in Italian. Um, and deals about uh, the, how to design the user interface, basically. Well, more in general, the user experience, okay? So, uh, how to create an application that uh, is uh, not just nice looking, which may be a challenge by itself, uh, but also usable. Now, it, it's easy to use, easy to understand, uh, efficient, uh, and uh, leads the user to fulfilling the go their goals uh, instead of uh, uh, maybe having them fight against the interface to do what they, what they need to do, okay? So that's a course uh, about uh, 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 using the knowledge that you have about building interfaces. Uh, uh, so we learn the technology here in this course. And in that course, you learn how to put the technology at the service of the users. Okay? In order to avoid creating applications that are ugly, that are difficult, that are too nerdy for the general people, and so on. Okay? Uh, so uh, if you are interested in this, uh, especially if you are interested in more the front-end matters, uh, I would suggest that uh, if you are interested in more so on the technology side, uh, so you will never want to, to teach to a human, uh, though maybe, maybe this is not uh, the course for you, or maybe it is uh, uh, because maybe you learn a different point of view. Another course that fits into this ecosystem is uh, mobile application development. Today, the techniques for web development and mobile development are share a lot in common. Uh, basically, all uh, mobile applications also have a backend, uh, which has the same identical characteristics of, uh, of uh, web application backends. Uh, but of course, mobile has its own challenges by itself. Uh, the, uh, for the, of course, for the usability point of view, the screen is small. The uh, efficiency point of view, uh, well, you have enough computational power, but it drains the battery. So you need to be efficient from that point of view. And all the uh, additional sensors and stuff that you have on, on the mobile phone. Uh, by the way, today many, web, many mobile applications are developed as web applications running inside the mobile browser. So there's a lot of, of overlap. Okay, so there's uh, a lot of overlap between uh, web application and a mobile application. 
So this is the full uh, package of, for you if you are interested in this uh, uh, you know, area uh, of uh, computer uh, engineering. Coming back to the, our course, uh, what are the main topics that we are going to explore here? Well, first of all, uh, JavaScript as a language. I'm, I want to stress this uh, because uh, uh, if, they, if you ask your friends uh, what is this course about, they will tell you, okay, you need to develop a React application by the exam, which is true. Uh, at the exam, we will need to develop uh, an application using the React framework. But we don't want this to be a course uh, about the React framework, okay? There's a lot of courses out there you know, that you can follow online and say, okay, I will teach you React in 10, in, in 10 days or in 48 hours or whatever you want, okay? Um, that will give you only, or well, basically, instructions or tutorial or, or, or uh, um, yeah, detailed instruction about how to you know, uh, write something to, to get a, a result. Uh, we don't need it. We don't want to do the training, let's say, about a framework or about a library here at the university. We, of course, need to lay more solid foundations. Okay? Uh, and so we start from understanding how the web platform is working how the browsers are working, what are the technologies, the languages, uh, and the issues, uh, let's say, on the basic platform. And then we see how one specific uh, framework, uh, such as React, uh, is helping us to solve these issues. But we need to be you know, solid on the foundations because React uh, comes and goes. So it's, uh, it's a famous framework, it's a lot of users, but maybe in five years, uh, we will all be using uh, something different uh, and we'll see, look at React as the, as the ugly child of the family, okay? So uh, we, of course, need to be able to shift and to adapt uh, and to learn uh, maybe also in the workplace where you are going to go, they are using a different, uh, different framework, but they will also be using JavaScript. They all, we always be using CSS and HTML and the DOM because that's the technology that we have, okay? It's also evolving. But we need to have a, 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 a strong grounding on the technology. So basically, half of the, of the course is about, uh, no, a little less than half of the course, is about the basic technologies. So having a good understanding of JavaScript, not just for cut and paste in React component, but understanding its, its value on the client side and on the server side as a language. And the uh, ecosystem and the architecture is something that we we'll try to to understand, even if we, it means that we are trying to do something, or will be a couple of weeks in which we are doing, going to work uh, in an outdated way, okay, by writing JavaScript uh, on the browser by ourselves, uh, just to understand the mechanics uh, of, uh, of how the object model and the, uh, let's say, asynchronous model is implemented in the browsers. We'll understand that it's difficult, we will understand which are the difficulties, and then we will switch to a framework that will you know, create a, a smoother environment for us, uh, and we'll try to hide or manage some of the complexities. And so this, the, the, second, the second half of the course uh, is uh, uh, the React framework, and in particular for building what we call single page applications, okay? So, uh, application that loads the web page once and then all do all the computation and the adaptation and reaction uh, reactivity uh, on the client side uh, with JavaScript. Mm -hmm. So these are this, these four uh, big pillars uh, um, that uh, we will follow uh, during, during the course. And this maps uh, to the different weeks uh, in which in every week uh, we have a topic to cover. Uh, we start, of course, uh, um, from uh, uh, the writing JavaScript uh, by itself, uh, and then we move to writing JavaScript on the server side, so create a small server, uh, just for, let's say, implementing APIs and so on. Then we move, uh, so the first three weeks. Uh, then we move to the front end, so some uh, two, a couple of weeks about the foundation, how the browser works, what are the technology in which the browser is working. And then, this is after, uh, near, we are nearly after the course, uh, we learn uh, how to program in the React framework. So there are 
four or five weeks uh, about that. Uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, at the end, you are the two final weeks uh, in which we are going to link the client and the server. Okay, so the part uh, the client server interaction. So we have the server side here, the client side here, and uh, joining the client and the server here by exchanging data and uh, all the authentication and logging stuff uh, at the end. Okay. The course is, uh, of course, uh, 14 weeks. Uh, here you see only 11 listed because the last weeks uh, are used only for doing exercises uh, and stuff like that. And, uh, um, and uh, basically, in the last week, there will be no classes uh, at all. And uh, I explain you why. So, this is the schedule that we have. Uh, we have these three hours on the Tuesday mornings in this very vertical classroom. And uh, uh, we have some labs uh, on the Thursday mornings. Uh, due to the number of people who are enrolled in this course, uh, in this course uh, the labs are split in three. Mm. So there will be three groups uh, of people. I, I think I already have the, the, the division in, in letters. Um, so that uh, you will be in smaller groups uh, and it will be a better, uh, it will be easier to, to follow you uh, during the labs. The labs are starting on the second week. Okay, so it's not this Thursday, but next one. Uh, while this Thursday, I'm still in the hours for doing a class. Okay, so uh, on this Thursday, you should come <laughs> in R2B, okay, which is somewhere above here, I think, um, and we'll continue the class. So we'll have three three, let's say, lectures of three hours each, today, Thursday, and next Tuesday, and then we start with the labs uh, on the following Thursday with that, something like the 13th uh, or something like that uh, of, um, of March, okay? Uh, and so, we are doing three extra hours of classes, and we are shaving these hours off from the last week. So in the last week, we are, you will see that there are no, cl no classes uh, planned because we are doing them here in the first week. We are playing this game so that uh, you have more time for working during the, end of, uh, during the end of the course, during the last weeks of the course. Hmm? So this is the only exception for the rest. Uh, Tuesday and Thursday are organized in this way. Uh, I cannot stress enough uh, the importance of the labs, okay? The classes, okay, I'm me speaking. We'll try to interact a bit when we do some exercises, but the real the uh, work and the real, uh, real learning uh, happens in the labs uh, when you will try to develop something and uh, we can be there for helping you, for maybe uh, managing your questions uh, or uh, your difficulties and so on. So uh, if you have to manage your schedule, I would ask you to put uh, the maximum priority into the labs, okay? We have three groups uh, just to be able to follow you, so we can follow you if you, if you come. Of course, uh, we are not uh, taking the presence. We are not uh, you know, asking you to submit anything. So we are not uh, enforcing your presence in the labs, but we are actually offering this opportunity and really asking that you, you, know, uh, you profit from that. Okay? So that's my rant about the labs. Um, so the classes will be in this room. Uh, uh, in theory, you have the power outlets in the, in the desk, so you can use uh, also your computer. We can develop something together. Normally, except today, uh, we try in the three hours, uh, I will try to have the, the first half of the class uh, by introducing some new topic, and the second half by uh, working on, on an exercise on the same topic. So so that we can immediately put to practice uh, what, we, what we are describing. Uh, and we'll tr also try to make that in an incremental way so that we have uh, one project uh, let's say, that we are going to build step by step during the weeks. And also the labs will work in the same way. We'll have uh, one project that uh, in the different labs uh, will be incrementally built. So uh, we already have the, the big picture of where we want to go. 
uh, building a website, a uh, very simple one. Uh, but in every week, uh, we'll try to use what we learn in that week uh, for advancing uh, our application uh, in different aspects. Um, uh, every class will be video recorded. Every now and then, I will try to check if it's still uh, recording. Because what happened in uh, some classroom is that the mic stopped, stopped working, and so we have a lot of, uh, uh, of muted uh, videos, but for now, it seems to be working. Um, and there are some topics during the course which are fundamental, but uh, also easy and boring in some cases, okay? Or maybe many of you, you're, you are coming from very different uh, uh, let's say universities or degrees, uh, um, maybe, maybe some topics uh, are already known to you. And so in that case, uh, we are not spending the time here in the classroom to repeat, uh, I don't know, HTML, okay? So we'll give you some reference to read different readings and documents and links, uh, say, okay, please uh, have a look at this document. There's nothing difficult. If you never saw that, uh, these are some references where you can learn it. And if you already know it or if you already uh, did it in the in the bachelor or or, or by yourself uh, that's that's fine okay so we'll try to use the hours here to do something more more juicy hmm? uh, we'll tell you well in advance that you have all the time you know, to, to to dig into these topics there's nothing critical it's a basic basic stuff that we really doing that together in classroom uh, would be actually boring for both for both of us hmm? okay the labs will start uh, as I said, next week, uh, again, there are labs in the classroom, so we don't need any special equipment, just a laptop and the power uh, outlet, so we'll, that will be in the classroom like this. It's easier to find a class than, the, than a lab. Um, we'll publish the text uh, online on the website of the course, uh, and uh, in advance so that you can uh, have a look at it before, before coming to the class, because, you know, 90 minutes, one and a half is... Uh, there's more time for implementing something. So if you already have a look, uh, then you can start thinking or reasoning about what to do, and then in the lab start doing, and maybe also asking questions uh, about what you are doing. And uh, we'll uh, publish the solutions uh, normally at least one week after the previous lab. No? I'm a bit, normally I'm a bit against uh, giving the solutions uh, to exercises because then people get uh, lazy and they wait for the, to, to see the solution and say, okay, that's the solution. I wouldn't be able to, to do it by myself, but they, do this, they, but they didn't, they didn't try, okay? So it's important that you try <laughs> and, uh, and maybe you check the solution, but if you try, you succeed, you don't need the solutions anymore. So, but you, I already, already know that uh, you always claim that you want the solution, so we provide them Please don't look at them or don't rely on them, okay? Rely on your own work to doing uh, the, the exercise uh, um, that, because that's where, as I said, that's where the learning happens, right? Uh, during the labs, uh, I said, we are, we, you are going to build a, a small project, uh, one step by step. So at the beginning, we also will uh, describe the, the end, the final point, where we will go, what are the specifications of the final uh, website, and then we start step by step. Of course, in the, the first week, uh, we'll basically learn the language, so we're not thinking about the website uh, yet, but uh, it will happen. Hmm? Uh, some labs uh, will, uh, most of the labs uh, will, uh, do, will uh, be the work of one week. So that Thursday, we are going to build this piece. So in some cases, uh, we, uh, we propose an exercise that will last a couple of weeks. So to implement some functionality will require more time, so we say, okay, for this step, you have two weeks uh, to, to, to work on it. Hmm? But uh, it's, uh, we'll always, uh, it's, it's, it will all uh, be published and, and described. So uh, tentatively, I check the, the list of students uh, and try to make three groups uh, of roughly the same size, which are posted here. Uh, and this would be the groups uh, in which you should go and uh, follow the lab. Uh, the, the first group at 8.30 and Thursday, the second group, uh, the second and third group will be at 10 uh, o'clock in the morning, the second class, okay? Um, the second and third group are in the same 
time slot, and uh, they are in two different rooms, uh, and so of course we have two different people that uh, are going to follow, follow them. Okay, so start planning for, for that since uh, starting from next week. Um, just remember, this week uh, we have no labs, uh, and so we ask you to come at 8.30 in 2B, R2B, and for the full three hours, okay? So that's the only exception. Okay, uh, what about material or support uh, information? So we have uh, some links here. Uh, the first link is the website uh, where I organize, or we organize all the information. So we are not using the, the portal of the Polytechnic very much uh, because I find it uh, oh, not, not so friendly and uh, takes time because you have to log in every time or whatever. So we build a different website, which is here, uh, which is organized in these four main sections. Uh, information is practically useless uh, for you because it, uh, it only gives you information that we already have because you already know the classes and so on. Um, uh, development resources uh, gives you the links uh, for the tools uh, to download, install, and so on, the tools that we are using, and plus some other libraries and something that may be useful. Okay? And the real juice comes into the schedule section, where uh, we have the, a table uh, that is going to, uh, to grow. Okay, this is wrong. Um, uh, to grow, uh, with, the, with, the, with the topics and the material uh, for, of each class. So I'm trying, we are trying to put the schedule in advance uh, so that you know uh, what will happen in the next days, uh, the material, the slides, uh, and then we will publish the videos of the, of, the, um, of the classes, all in this page. Okay, and also the labs, uh, we'll have the, 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 the text of the lab uh, will be published here and so on. So this page here, the schedule, is the main page uh, um, where you should come for, for all the, the material, for all the information. Mm -hmm. um, these slides are also published uh, on a uh, GitHub repository, and basically we have a GitHub page here, which is called Polito Web App One, okay, which is common to the two courses. Let me zoom a bit. And uh, uh, well, the website gives you the link, the information, but all the materials, the PDFs, and so on, and the example, the exercises will be on GitHub. We link them. And uh, this is, I think it's convenient because there's a repository called uh, Course Materials. Uh, and if you clone this repository on, on your computer, then you can just pull the repository and then get the last, latest slides without uh, downloading them one by one. And if it, even if it happens that maybe we correct some, some slides, at the next pool, you get the latest version. So, as you want, but uh, just for your information, all the material will be here. Uh, I have one repository called the Web Application One Wix, which is a strange name, uh, name uh, where actually I will create many folders, one per week. So week one, week two, week three, week four, where we, I will save all the, for all the example exercises that I will be doing in the classroom here. So at the end of the class, I will push what, what I do, and so you always have uh, exactly what I'm writing here in my computer, so you don't need to copy and try to gaze uh, or, at, or understand what I'm writing, okay? So you can focus on your attention about the concept and not just uh, uh, worrying about copying the code. So everything, the general principle is everything that comes out of here ends up on GitHub, and so you can, or on the videos, and so, uh, the, you, you, there's nothing you can miss, okay? And of course, there's also uh, some uh, laboratories that will mm, start from next week uh, where we have the different repository with the um, text of the labs uh, and the solution that will be published. So everything is also is linked from the website, but it's really available uh, on GitHub uh, for your convenience, for our <laughs> and yours convenience, okay? Um, okay, so the learning material is in this repo, the weekly exercises is there, and also the video lectures will be published uh, on the Polytechnic website, so you can see that from the portal or from the app, and uh, I also upload them on YouTube, uh, because in many cases it's easier and also maybe more flexible to see them, or you can download the files uh, and uh, do whatever you want with them. 
um, so they will be all uh, available to you. Um, so, so these are some links here. Uh, for the lazy of you uh, that uh, are keyboard challenged, uh, or uh, they can, we have the QR, the QR codes so if you want to link uh, to this. Thing. And then the most important uh, is also the Telegram channel. I, I try to use to avoid uh, all the thousands of unread emails uh, that you can that you get in your mailbox every day. So for the course, we'll try to communicate on this channel. Uh, I see that most of you are already enrolled, but not all, not all of you. Uh, shame on you, who didn't. Uh, um, that's, I will use it for communication, for uh, news, or maybe to sharing some links or whatever. But you feel free, please feel free to write and to ask questions, to give you your opinion, give examples, comments, or whatever. Okay? It's just a free informal space uh, that we can use uh, no, to to communicate during the course. Um, it's not a problem to say, I, I understood nothing about the class of today. Mm -hmm. uh, we can, okay, uh, write it there. There's no shame in that, okay? There's no problem or, or any other kind of question. Okay, so the, don't be shy uh, in classroom and don't, don't be shy on the group. Uh, even because uh, behind your nickname, I, don't, I really don't know and I don't care basically who you are, and so just trying to help you there, okay? So really try to use the channel no, for asking information, also for ask, uh, helping each other no, with questions. I know you have the parallel groups uh, with only students. I will not go into that, of course. I, I, I leave you your space, but this is the space in which we are. Uh, we are three teachers. Hmm? Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mention it uh, at the beginning, sorry. Let's go back here. Is a, there's a long list of teachers here, but uh, uh, because we put together all the teachers of the Italian and the English uh, version, in uh, the English version, I will be the main teacher here. And uh, uh, so I didn't introduce myself, sorry, I'm full you. And uh, in the labs, uh, I will have the help uh, of Luca and uh, Juan Pablo, okay? While Luigi and, and, and the other Luca uh, are working in the, in the Italian course, okay? Sorry, I jumped to the wrong side. What is that? Okay, I was here. Okay, so uh, the three teacher will uh, be lurking in this uh, Telegram challenge, chan channel, and so we'll try to, to answer uh, as soon as possible. Hmm. Of course, uh, let's try to speak English into that channel, okay? Uh, I would leave emails only for issues that are really personal, let's say, okay? So there's a personal issue, of course, write, write me an email. Otherwise, uh, try to use the Telegram channel. The, say the response time on Telegram, which would be much quicker than the mail. Okay, exam. Do we have an exam? Yes, we do. Uh, the exam is the development of a project. So it's a very practical course here. Uh, we will give you, we will publish the specification of a of a website to develop 20 days before the exam date. I don't know when the exam date will be, but 20 days before, or if we are good, 21 or 22, depends on where the weekends come, uh, we publish uh, a specification. And then you have these 20 days to develop the program. The exercise will be the same for everybody. It will change at every exam call, of course. Uh, and you have 20 days to work on your own in uh, implementing the solution. We will have a mechanism based on GitHub for creating repositories so that you can save and push the repository in an area where we can automatically manage the, uh, the repository and see your submissions and so on. And so it will be on your own, on, working on GitHub, and the submission of the exam also will happen on GitHub. There's a system I don't know if you already use in other courses called GitHub Classroom that manages the creation and the distribution of hundreds of repositories and so on. But we'll come to that uh, towards the end of the course. Okay. So uh, the, by the day before the exam date, so maybe let's say that the official exam date will be, I don't know, 15 of June. By midnight before, so by the 23.59 of uh, 
what did you say, 15th, of the 14th, or the day before, you have to submit your project with a procedure, with a push procedure, basically, by tagging the solution. Um, that's it. The evaluation of the project will create a score of around 26, not around, at maximum 26 points. Then we have a discussion on the project. So one by one, there will be an oral discussion where we sit together and have a look at your project. Um, and this will happen immediately in the first day from the exam date in the next days. Okay. You are a lot of people, we cannot do everything in one day, of course. There will be some slots in the, in the following days, so that it will also be possible for you for you know, matching with your schedule. So if, if in that day you have another exam, another issue, you will just book another slot. There will be several slots in some days after the exam date. Okay? So uh, what you have to do before the exam is uh, submit the project and book a slot for the discussion. Then, in the day, we sit there and have a look uh, at the project. Uh, what we are doing is that we are going to open the project with you together during your discussion. So uh, we are not able to give you, we don't want, we, we will not give you the evaluation of the project before. Okay, that's for the uh, sake of timing. In the first years, we got the submissions, looked at the project, gave a score, and then during the discussions. And that was very stressful for everybody because we had to correct the hundreds of, of, uh, of uh, while you were waiting, we have to score and grade them, and then you have to discuss, but you were waiting and the clock was ticking, you had the other exam, there was a the second call of the exam, and everything was very stressful. So what we decided is to have the discussion a bit longer, we sit, uh, wait, uh, some more time and we look at the project together. That's also good for you because is there some blocking issues, something that is wrong with the project, some you know reason for which it's not running, you are there. Okay. So we can maybe go forward uh, if there are some stupid issues can can come out. So we sit on the oral discussion and what we are going to evaluate with you is the value of your project. And at the same time, the um, knowledge that you have about your project. These four points for your discussion are about uh, you knowing your project. Okay, you are, I, I'm, not be, I'm not going to ask uh, theoretical questions about uh, uh, what are the methods of a JavaScript array, okay? I, I don't care, oh, you, you should know them if, if you use them in your project, so I don't, I don't need uh, no, to, to ask them or to waste time in that. But uh, as you may imagine, as, you, as the project is done by you in 20 days, uh, we need to be extra sure that that is your work, your personal work. Uh, okay, you didn't, okay, you can work together your friends, uh, of course, but everything you submit, uh, you must know it very well. Okay, we should not have this suspect uh, that somebody else uh, did the exam for you. And that's the main goal of the oral discussion. Look at the project together. You tell us uh, uh, the, your design choices. You tell us uh, how you organize the code and so on. We look at the code. We use the application. So we will we'll both check the functional aspects. Are all the functions implemented? And all the non-functional aspects, so the code quality and the, and the organization of the application and so on. So while looking at that, we are making our mind uh, the score, these 26 points, uh, and uh, the evaluation of how well you are familiar with your code, how well you are motivating the design choices, and so on. And that's the four points, okay? 26 plus four, plus four is uh, 30, and uh, we can have up our sleeve uh, uh, two extra points, uh, okay, if we feel that your discussion or your project uh, as something special extra, we can you know, uh, give you zero or one or two extra points uh, and that will give you uh, to, the, to the maximum score if you want. These two points are, again, overall about the discussion of the project, about the oral, so I don't. 
Um, okay, this is what uh, we said before. If the student doesn't have the master of the, the written code, uh, the exam will be canceled. Okay. This is not your project. Come again with your project and the next call. That would be the message, okay? It really never happened, or nearly never happened. Sometimes it happened. Let's try to avoid that, okay? Um, okay, this is the, the, the gist of the exam. Uh, of course, uh, we will, well, when we come closer, we uh, will give you more detailed instructions and details. Uh, but the basic idea is the exam is the development of a project on my own. That's it. You don't have to study for the oral discussion because it will be about your code, about your project, about your design choices, your implementation. Okay? And, of course, the type of project that you're asking to do is exactly the same of the type of project that we are doing during the classes. So there will be no surprise during the course we did something, but the exam was totally different. Huh? I know of this band of teachers. Um, okay, so in fact, uh, the, the exam will ask you to develop an application using the, the, the framework and the libraries that we are using during the course, so React and JavaScript on the client side, and Northern Express on the server side, <coughs> SQLite as a storage uh, for, for simplicity. And uh, we give you basically a functional specification. So what the functions, what action that the website will, uh, will support, needs to support, um, leaving to you the design. So we are not telling you, okay, create one page with these components and another page with these features and so on. That will be up to you. We'll describe in general what are the functionalities and then it's up to you to organize them in screens and in, uh, at the, at the say, interface level and uh, in uh, components at the JavaScript level. The database, you will have to design your, uh, by yourself and so on. So you do all the design choices to match uh, that uh, uh, functional requirement, those functional requirements, okay? Uh, so it will be also something you know, very, very personal, let's say. And I see, I, what I appreciate is I see a lot of variability, you know, a lot of people that really get into the, 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 the mood and try to do something for themselves also. Okay, um, the exam is, uh, even if the specification is the same for everybody, the exam is personal, individual, okay? Uh, and we will give you the repository on GitHub uh, to work on your project. Uh, you can push and commit, uh, organize uh, your code as you want, do branches. Uh, what we are not going to look at the history of your project. Maybe don't have other people commit, but only yourself. But uh, we, are, we don't care about this. It's, it's your doing. We are only uh, looking at the last commit or the, the commit which is tagged with final. So, uh, you put a tag called final in one commit, uh, and we, that's the one that we are going to look at. Hmm? Um, and the, the program must run on my computer. The website must run on my computer. That's. Uh, and not in, on your computer, so let's clear away the, 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 the excuse. Uh, it runs on my computer that you see on the memes, um, because actually it's important also to plan for portability, okay? Um, okay. The project is evaluated according to the matching of the functional and non-functional requirements, so is that complete? Did you implement everything that was requested? And functional requirements. And uh, did you implement it well, according to well, good patterns, uh, to cre uh, readable code, and so on? It's not, uh, there will not be you know, 10,000 slides of code. Uh, uh, it's not a huge project. So uh, we, we prefer that it's well organized uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and clear, and, uh, and you have uh, learned to make sound design choices, not just put together stuff and tweaking until it sort of works. Hmm? That's something we don't like. Uh, and also because it should be clear you know, uh, to you and to us uh, what, uh, what is done. Okay, and well, the your discussion that only we say that the main goal is to ensure that you develop your own application that you submitted. Hmm? And so this means uh, understanding the behavior of the code. So we are going to ask, uh, what is the function doing, for example? Or uh, why did you implement this in this way? 
these are the two basic, basic kind of question that will start the discussion. Um, and usually, if, if you did that and you submitted it the day before, it should be, <laughs> uh, it should be very easy to respond, okay? Uh, okay, apart from this, uh, we are dealing with topics that are extremely well known and uh, well documented across the website. Uh, so there are you know, really tens of thousands of uh, tutorial websites, uh, books uh, about this topic. Okay, so it's not difficult to find extra information. Of course, we have some core information, core resources. One is the Mozilla Development Network pages on JavaScript. Also on HTML, CSS, but basically on JavaScript. That's uh, the, the main source of information for when we need a reference. There are also some tutorials, but basically for the reference, we have the um, human readable specification of the JavaScript language. There's also the official specification of JavaScript, but it's totally unreadable, Means, meaning that it's written for compiler designers, people that need to build compilers and interpreters of JavaScript. So it's very, very technical, and that doesn't really explain how to program. While in the Mozilla website, we have some guides, and uh, so more for learning, and some reference sections that are explained in, in plain English, basically. Plus, when we, in the second part of the course, uh, where there will be all the documentation of the React uh, um, framework, which is also very well done and very complete. Uh, so these are the two, our main reference points, where there are the uh, source of information. In both cases, there are guides and there are reference sections, uh, documentation and, and reference. Uh, then, of course, uh, if you search for a book on, on JavaScript or on React, you will find uh, Hundreds of them, if you, if you are the kind of person that likes uh, reading a book, uh, you, you find, just don't look for something too shallow or too superficial, okay, because we are trying to understand the fundamentals. There's a nice uh, website uh, which is called, uh, well, <laughs> this uh, set of books uh, which you find uh, um, for free on GitHub was initially called You Don't Know JavaScript, which is a nice and challenging title. And then the person was a bit criticized, so he changed the title in You Don't Know JavaScript Yet. Okay, so, okay but you can, you can learn it. So it's a, it's a, it has some deep dive uh, on some of the topic, and so we are using this resource uh, here. Now and then, you find the reference in the slides and so on. And also this other is, uh, say, an Italian blogger that also writes some, some books on it. These are all free resources if you want. Then, of course, you can go on with uh, links to books and resources uh, as you want. Um, okay, again. Tools. Uh, what are we going to use uh, for, uh, for our work? Uh, we need a, a JavaScript interpreter. Actually, we have two JavaScript interpreters that we're using in our course. One for the server side, which is Node, Node.js. And one from the client side, which is your browser, okay? Chrome or Firefox or Safari or whatever. Edge, they tell me that's a browser source. Um, so what you need to do is to install the Node runtime. Uh, we are targeting the LTS. So every year we check at the beginning of the course which is the uh, LTS sensor for long-term support version, so the most stable version. And, uh, and we try to keep with that version for all the course, okay? So this year we are going to use uh, Node version 20, 20 point whatever comes, okay? Uh, we are, 20, uh, 21 is already ongoing, but it's not in the course. So be sure that you are downloading the LTS uh, uh, today and because at the exam we will be running say, on my computer with this version of Node. Sometimes not versions change and they can break something, especially in the dependencies. Some libraries will be dependent on one version of Node on the other. So let's align on the version 20 for this year, okay? And uh, uh, when we go into React, so we need Node and the browser. And uh, uh, when we go to React, there are a couple of nice plugins that will help us to so empower the uh, in domain inspector of the, of the browser by understanding the React component. But it's a, a very simple plugin extension of the browser. 
we will give you the links uh, when we go when we start uh, working with uh, with React. And uh, as a programming environment, uh, we are using Visual Studio Code, okay, which is again is very friendly on JavaScript because it's also written in JavaScript, basically in TypeScript, uh, and so it's very well integrated with, with the world, world development, okay. Then this is the one that we're using. Actually, you're free to use any development environment you want. Uh, if you want to use WebStorm, uh, you're free to use that. If you want to use, uh, I don't know, Eclipse or whatever, okay? Because <laughs> at the end of the day, the code is what is needed. In the course, we are using VS Code, but uh, we, it's not a real requirement. Also, the exam, we just, you just need to push the project uh, without any you know, reference or any, any dependency on the development environment. And that's it. So uh, basically, try to give you a big picture of what will happen in the next uh, 60 hours, uh, or I would say 59, because one is already gone. Uh, if you have any questions, did I forget anything? Do you have any curiosity? OK. It doesn't look you're afraid, so it's a good point to start. OK. Uh, for any further questions, if you have something, remember Telegram group. Okay, that's the that's the response to to everything. Okay, so we can use uh, some time here in the first hour before doing the break to start diving into JavaScript. So let me cut the video.